Welcome to the Drone Buzz, episode 5. We're going to give you some good drone news in under 5 minutes. All right, guys, so we're talking about Autel versus DJI, and it's not the drones, it's the lawsuits. We'll also tell you a little bit about how you can get your Part 107 for free online right now. Now, the Autel and DJI lawsuit thing isn't new. They've been going at it since 2016 when DJI said the X-Star looked like the Phantom, and they had borrowed some engineers of theirs to help make it happen. Then uh, Autel threw a countersuit at them, claiming that they were doing predatory pricing. Now what we have here is actually a patent lawsuit. And actually, this is the first one that Autel has won. The big patent issue is with the lawsuit is the way you put these props on, Autel has a patent on it, and they're saying that DJI infringes on it. Now listen, I'm not an engineer, nor am I a patent guy, but you know who is? Chris. Hey Jack, how's it going? I've got our Evo right here and our Mavic 2 Pro. As you can see, uh, they both have removable props and they both remove identically. The props rotate the same direction and as you can see in these uh, quick videos I made, uh, they snap on and off in a very similar way. In fact, the only difference is the spring that keeps things kind of preloaded and engaged on the Evo is in the prop, which I didn't even realize until today. On the Mavic drones, with the exception of the Mavic Air, which has screw-on props, the spring mechanism is located on the uh, shaft of the motor itself. So that's a minor difference, and it turns out it doesn't matter. So I did a detailed read-through of Autel's patent and their independent claim. Uh, and, you know, I've written some patents. I've been involved in them. I'm an engineer, so I'm kind of used to reading them. And what it all boils down to is the claims. And their independent claim, which is the broadest and the first claim of their patent, uh, clearly covers it doesn't matter it doesn't matter which way that motor rotates it doesn't matter which way you click it in they don't even reference in the claims the spring mechanism specifically so uh, their independent claim and their claims in general seem very well written to me and have very broad coverage if they're interpreted that the independent claim is valid and i, I think it was so uh, moral of the story dji can't work around this with any removable prop that can be just engaged by rotating and where uh, the two props can't be interchanged. So they could work around it where you had to pay attention to which uh, motor you were putting the prop on. I think they could work around it that way, uh, but you don't want that. You wanna know that if I can get my uh, if I can get my prop on there, it's on the right motor. Uh, my drone's not gonna flip, it's not gonna try to fly upside down. As of right now, Autel uh, went after the Mavic series primarily, uh, but they mentioned that they probably are looking at going after uh, the Inspire and the Phantom. I've got our, our Phantom here, and it works very similarly as well. You know, push down, rotate, and pull off. A uh, little bit different uh, locking mechanism in terms of how it engages and how it um, makes sure you don't put the wrong prop on the wrong motor. But as I already mentioned, it doesn't matter. Uh, Autel's got it all covered. Okay, so the judge obviously sided with Autel. And what that means for DJI is they can't ship products that fall under this patent. Now, odds are that Autel and DJI work something out. Um, and that's probably not going to be good for you or I as a consumer. Likely higher prices, right? Uh, if you remember, Apple and Samsung had a very similar thing. And, uh, you know, they solve these issues with money. If you're thinking about getting your Part 107 and you can't right now because the testing facilities are closed, the FAA has actually done something pretty awesome, and that's allowing you to do it online. Go to their website. You can register for the course. It's free. They're waiving the $150 testing fee. You take a two-hour course. You take the test. You have to get 100% and you have 90 minutes to do so. Now it's an open book test, so you can look up answers if you want. You can even phone a friend. And if you don't get 100%, you can go back. They'll tell you what you got wrong, and you can fix your answers and take it again. The test for first-timers is 35 questions, and the recurrent test is 28 questions. One of the big changes is this certification is only good for six months. So at the end of six months, you're going to have to go to a testing center, hopefully, and then you're going to have to renew, and that renewal will be good for two years. 
So no excuses now, make sure you get that 107. Now, if you've been watching the channel or checking out our website, you know we've done a lot of content on this Mavic Air 2. It's a fantastic drone, uh, but there are a lot of other really good drones on the horizon and a lot of good sub $1,000 drones coming our way. We've got the Xiaomi Femi X8 2020 edition. That thing's right now pre-order at 420 bucks. That's a steal. Uh, we'll see how that compares to this in the Mavic Mini. We also have the Hubson Zeno 2 en route. Uh, it's been delayed forever. They've had some issues. Of course, there are some big issues right now shipping things out of China, specifically out of Hong Kong. It's a mess there, so things are taking a lot more time. I'm also building an, a DJI HD toothpick, so that's coming out soon. And we picked up a couple of 3D printers, so, so we're going to be making some drone stuff. So if you have ideas, things that we need to do, uh, send them our way. Yeah, no, no, Ken, I'm, no, we're filming it right now. Yeah, yeah, sorry, man. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this up on YouTube, and then I'm, uh, gonna watch me some Last Dance tonight. Yep, good stuff. Word.